Hi there, I'm Susan Beyer and this is Fun With Research. Thanks for joining me. I want to talk today about how to get attention when it comes to your thought leadership research. So one of the things we've learned in our own research about thought leadership uh, is that in addition to being uh, helpful, uh, your research really has to be new. It has to provide something topical. It, re it has to have something new to say. Um, and one of the ways to get visibility on your research is to say something new about something that is assumed to be the case. So deeply entrenched assumptions um, can be great fodder for exploration in your research because if you find that they are not what they seem to be, that they're maybe not universally held assumptions, um, <clears throat> or that people really don't feel that way, they feel a little bit differently, or that things have changed uh, over time, that could be a great way to get people to sit up and say, whoa, I need to read this, because this is a new perspective on something that I believe to be true. We've seen this in a number of cases. Um, my friend Drew McClellan and I did a study a few years ago on agency employees uh, and whether there's sort of a millennial mindset among uh, younger employees uh, who really don't care that much about their work and just do it so they can go surfing on the weekends or whatever. And one of the things we found uh, was that uh, uh, unlike what many agency owners believed, while there was a millennial mindset in their agency employee population, uh, it was not held by the majority of millennials, and most of the people who had that mindset were not millennials. Uh, so that really flew in the face of what a lot of people expected to hear. We've seen similar things when it comes to the extent to which, for example, um, <clears throat> rural farmers buy equipment and whether they're willing to do that online. There's a lot of assumptions about whether they're willing to do that. And we've seen some very interesting things that sort of fly in the face of assumptions that maybe uh, these farmers aren't likely to use the internet when they're making purchases of equipment. So uh, when you're thinking about your thought leadership research, I want you to specifically think about assumptions that are held um, about the people that you are researching. And I want you to think about it from the perspective of the people you want your thought leadership research to appeal to. So for example, if you're in an agency and you want to be selling to manufacturers um, your services to manufacturers, I want you to think about how manufacturers view the audience of people that they sell to and what assumptions they may have. Because it doesn't really matter what assumptions you know, people in uh, an urban center have about people who live in rural America. What really matters is how your prospects think about the folks that they're selling to. So think about the assumptions that your clients may have about their audience, that your prospects may have, or people in an industry that you're trying to get the attention of when you build your thought leadership research. Build that in and you'll have something uh, that will generate a lot of interest in your study when it does uh, when it does come out. I hope that's helpful to you. If you have questions, you can email me, susan at audienceauto.com, or better yet, join our new Facebook group, Fun With Research, um, and uh, happy to chat with you there. Hope that's helpful, and I hope you'll join me next Friday on Fun With Research.